With original structures that date back to before the Civil War, historic Claremont Farm is uniquely situated at the base of Virginia's Blue Ridge Mountains, not far west of our nation's capital. Claremont Farm uh, was started in 1957 by George A. Horkin, Jr. And uh, at that point it was uh, a smaller farm, about uh, 300 acres and over the years has grown to a farm of uh, 1,600 plus acres. We are 50 miles west of Washington, D.C. We're in the Virginia Piedmont and we're at the base of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And challenges that we face are having a cattle herd uh, and being compatible uh, with the environment. Brothers Carl Lindgren and Tony Horkin managed the farm together along with their mother, Anne Marie. Their late father, George Horkin, was an early champion of conservation easements and used them to protect Claremont Farm for future generations. We have uh, three generations working on the farm right now. Uh, my mother, who uh, does a lot of gardening on the rose garden and has always uh, helped out on the farm when, when need be, uh, either with the hay, uh, with the cattle, the bookkeeping, things of that nature. Uh, we have uh, Tony and myself, who are the general partners and operators of the of the day-to-day of uh, -day basis of the farm. We have our uh, uh, nephew Josh and uh, my daughter Erica, who who does who do work on the farm. Do a little of everything. Um... It depends kind of on, on the season and what, what we're doing here on the farm. We have anything from uh, general upkeep to uh, in the fall, I, I pretty much handle all the heifer calving. With rolling pastures and hay ground, Claremont Farm is primarily a cow, calf, and backgrounding operation. The 1,650 acres are home to more than 200 purebred Angus cow calf pairs that rotate through 33 fenced grazing units. We do rotational grazing, pasture to pasture. It's not, it's not intensive uh, grazing, but it's a grazing pattern that has worked on this farm to maintain the health of the pasture. Probably the most important thing about this farm is that it does represent uh, a long-term stewardship commitment uh, and, and you know, we'll stand with uh, protecting both wildlife, protecting uh, cattle production, as well as the water quality. With the farm's location in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, Carl and Tony give special attention to water management. They've worked in partnership with NRCS to install fence along four and a half miles of tributaries and a number of acres of forested wetlands in order to limit livestock access. This operation is one of my favorites to work with. They, uh, they're, they're all focused on the same goal of, of having a good, healthy herd and uh, making a little bit of money off the, off the farm and, and also looking out for the environment. And uh, they've, they've done a, uh, just an incredible job of protecting this resources in this area, both water and, and soil. We've done several uh, projects with, with NRCS and without a partnership as strong as that, uh, I, it, it, would be, it would be very hard to do. I mean, with their guidance, uh, with the cost share, uh, with their support, whenever you needed it, they, they were always there. Beyond cattle and hay, timber on the farm is selectively harvested in 20 to 25 year rotations from the forested land that cattle no longer have access to. And the family has taken action to protect 130 acres of riparian buffers, serving as wildlife corridors, connecting the once fragmented forests in the area. We're careful to put the fence 12 inches off the ground so that wildlife can get under the fence and then a deer can jump over the height of the fence, which is about 47 inches. We take great pride in the conservation practices we've implemented on the farm, uh, great pride in the cattle we produce, great pride in the way we manage our timber, uh, great pride in the bird life, the wildlife, just the way of life that we have here. Through three generations, Claremont Farm continues to grow and implement new conservation practices to care for their Angus cattle, the land, and the water. My hopes for the future of Claremont is to continue being good stewards of the land. And I believe that we've uh, done our share in protecting the rivers and the Chesapeake Bay. 
And I would really like to see the next chapter in Claremont Farm be about becoming carbon neutral. Being able to keep what Carl and Tony started years ago and what my grandfather started years ago and being able to keep that going. It's a special place. It's, a, uh, it's an enclave of, uh, of, of conservation, of good stewardship for the land, and we want to pass that on to every, every generation that, that comes behind us. Mm -hmm.